some AKT and MSK related questions, part one. Um, so question number one, if there's pain in one joint, what does the joint line tenderness and pain at the end of the range of movement um, in any direction suggest? Um, osteoarthritis or articular disease. Uh, question number two, if there is pain in one joint, what does point tenderness over the involved structure and pain exacerbated by movement mean? Um, basically, it suggests ligamentous, uh, ligamentous injury. Uh, question number three, in one joint problems, what are the red flags for prompt early or urgent referral? Uh, the answer is inflamed joint with associated fever, a locked joint or joint so painful that movement is impossible, severe pain at rest or at night, pain relentlessly worsening or periods of days. Next question. In multiple joint problems, what are red flags for prompt, early or urgent referrals? The answer is severe systemic symptoms like high fever, significant weight loss or very unwell. Patients suggesting rheumatoid arthritis, sepsis or malignancy, uh, rashes, nodules or GI disturbances, uh, severe pain or inability to function. Next question. What is the likely condition if a child presents with episodic muscular pains in legs at night, lasting about half an hour and waking the child from sleep, but rubbing the limb relieves the pain? Um, child feels completely well in the morning. The answer is nocturnal musculoskeletal pains or growing pains. Next question. Patient presenting with headaches who has poorly localized neck pain and sometimes associated with shoulder pain. Uh, basically, there shouldn't be any uh, midline or spinal tenderness. The answer is a cervicogenic headache. Uh, next question. Uh, patients usually uh, more than about 40 years of age with cervical spine pain, which is generally intermittent and related to activity. The answer is cervical spondylosis or general disease of the cervical spine. Next question, which condition will be associated with degeneration of cervical spine or disc prolapse uh, causing neck stiffness, pain in arms or fingers, reduced reflexes, sensory loss and reduced power? The answer is cervical nerve root irritation or entrapment. What common condition would cause sudden onset of painful stiff neck due to spasm of trapezius and sternocleidomastoid muscle and is usually self-limiting? Uh, usually, when the patient presents, they present with head uh, tilted to one side. The answer is called spasmodic torticollis or wry neck. Next question, which condition would cause hand or forearm pain, weakness or numbness, thinner or hypothenar wasting, and weak radial pulse? Uh, obviously, these symptoms suggest something called thoracic outlet compression symptoms. The answer is cervical rib. Next question, which condition would cause neck pain and decrease neck mobility starting several hours or days after being involved in a road traffic accident? The pain usually radiates to shoulder, arm and head. Uh, the answer is called whiplash injury. Uh, there's some extra um, information there as well. Essentially neck pain up to 12 weeks, you treat with simple um, analgesia, but if it's more than 12 weeks, then you need to refer to pain clinic or rheumatology. Uh, neurological symptoms, um, but no uh, radiculopathy less than six weeks. They again require simple analgesia with physio and muscle relaxant. But if there are neurological symptoms um, and more than six weeks of radiculopathy, uh, more than six weeks with radiculopathy, we should refer to MSK or for MRI. There's something called late whiplash syndrome. Basically, patient present after six months of road traffic accident. Uh, question number 12. By what duration the lower back pain is called acute back pain? The answer is less than six weeks. That is one and a half months. Next question. What, um, after what time duration the low back pain is called chronic lower back pain? The answer is more than three months. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't any um, classification between one and a half to three months. 
Um, so, um, next question. Which condition would bring on one side and back or buttock pain on straight leg raise test? The answer is sciatica. It's quite common. Next question. Which assessment tool can be used to score uh, back pain or lower back pain? The answer is keel start back pain scoring tool. Next question. X-rays for back pain is not recommended because it requires a high radiation dose and clinically meaningful findings are rare. But what are the exceptions? The answer is young patient less than 25 years of age. Um, essentially, X-ray of SI joints to exclude ankylosing spondylitis and elderly to exclude collapse or malignancy and history of trauma. Next question. At what level of disc protrusion patients can have symptoms of compression of the quadra equina syndrome? Essentially, it has to be below L2 um, because that's where spinal cord ends. But typically, um, it happens at L4-5 level. Next question. What level is the lower motor neuron weakness if there is do a loss of dorsiflexion um, of the foot? The answer is L4 level. But L4-5 to five level, a level if toes are also involved. So what level is the lower motor neuron weakness if there is loss of ankle reflex, plant reflection and eversion of the foot? The answer is S1 level. What is the most common level of spinal cord compression in cancer patients? Uh, it will be thoracic region, about 70%. And another thing to remember, uh, or which is often uh, exam, is Lermit sign, which is essentially it intermittent electric shock-like sensation down the center of the back following flexion of the neck in spinal cord compression. What level of spinal cord compression determine whether it will produce lower motor neuron or upper motor neuron sign? Now this is slightly, uh, it is important because there are two different answers to it. One is um, L1 level. Above L1 produces upper motor neuron signs, but below L1 produces lower motor neuron signs with or without perianal numbness. Um, basically, it is called equina. Uh, the another answer is lower motor neuron signs happen at the level of lesion, but upper motor neuron lesions, uh, uh, lesions uh, below that level. Next question, in symptoms of spinal cord compression, which medication can be given whilst patient is due to be seen urgently within 24 to 48 hours by the neurologist? Answer is dexamethasone, 16 mg per day. Next question, what is the importance of scoliosis which disappears on bending? Answer is, it is basically postural and is of no clinical significance. Uh, next question, what is the importance of scoliosis if associated with pain, especially at night? The answer is urgent referral for possible spinal tumor. That's, that's it for today. Many thanks.